Before we get started, we just want to say thank you to Goodson Moza, which is more known as Moza for sending us the Slypod E for review. As usual, we're not paid to say anything besides our own opinions, and Moza does not get to see this video before it is published. Let's get straight to the point. The most important thing of a motorized lighter, at least to us, is how easy to use it. This is because if it takes more than 10 minutes to just set up the slider for one shot, trust me, it will start discouraging you from using it at all. This is what happened to some of our sliders in the past. The SlidePod E is very easy to set up and use. Yes, it is because it only provides a forward and backward sliding motion. That's why it is simple, but I don't think it is a bad thing. You can literally set it up on a tripod, attach a camera to it, press and hold a button to power it on, then use the plus and minus button to get the sliding motion going, and that's really quick and convenient. Being able to control the slider using just the buttons is way better than having to open an app, connect to the slider, hoping that you don't need to update the firmware because some apps do force you to wait for firmware update, then you can start using the slider. If the app stops working or if your smart device dies, the slider is not going to work, but SlidePod E still works without a smart device. It is not as intuitive to use just the buttons to control the slider, but you still have some options when it comes to the sliding motions, and that is the speed. By pressing the button once, the SlidePod E will initiate the motion at its slowest speed. If you press the same button again, it will speed up by one level until it reaches the max speed. To slow it down, press the opposite button. The only problem I see using just the buttons, especially when changing speed, is the vibration caused by pressing the button. It will create micro vibration that might affect the footage. But if you press the button and let go and you're just using a sliding range afterwards, it will be smooth, so not a deal breaker. One very important thing to keep in mind is that you can only use the SlidePod E with a tripod because of its tube shape. Because of that, you will need a very sturdy and stable tripod. If you use it on a plasticky tripod, it will start tilting or dipping when the slider is moving and the weight is changing, and your footage will be off of its original axis. I'm using the SlidePod E with the Manfrotto 190X video tripod and it works well. This is not the lightest tripod in the world, but you kind of need that way to balance the whole setup. Another very obvious difference of the SlidePod E compared to other motorized sliders is the noise. It is very loud even at the slowest speed. It will for sure be picked up by any mic on the camera, so if you are recording audio while using the SlidePod E, get your mic as far as possible or maybe even use a laugh mic. If you are not recording the audio, it's fine. Let's get back to the controls. If you press and hold the plus or minus button, it will accelerate from the slowest to the max speed until it reaches the end. This is good for certain effects and good for resetting the slider to one end. You can double press the power button to stop the sliding motion in the middle. So if the slider is moving slowly and you have enough footage, you can just stop it in the middle. If you triple click the power button, the slider will reset back to its original position and power off. This is a very quick way to power off the slider and you can just triple click, pack the slider and you're good to go. Again, very convenient. Since there's no other control or buttons on the slider besides the power and plus and minus button, and there is no display on the slider, using the app is a must for more complicated motions and setups. Okay, so let's take a look at the Moza Master app to control the SlidePod E using your smart device. In order to connect your device to the SlidePod E, it's actually really simple. The first thing you need to do is to make sure that your Bluetooth is on your, on, on your smart device, and then turn on the SlidePod E, then go into the Moza Master app, select the device that you want to connect to. In this case, I'm going to select SlidePod Series, and it will be able to see the Moza SlidePod E that I have right beside me right now. I just need to tap onto that, so two seconds, three seconds, it will just connect to the SlidePod E, which is really quick. And another good thing is, as I mentioned before, the SlidePod E app does not require you to update the firmware on the device after you connect to the device. This is really, really good because other 
motorized sliders. I don't know why. Whenever I connect it to the app, it will just force me to wait till the firmware update's done. Sometimes it will take over like 10 minutes just to update the firmware. So this is really good. So you're not forced to wait. You can still use the slider right now. Of course, you can manually update the firmware by tapping on the upgrade while you're connected to the SlidePod E. You need to plug in the charger though onto the uh, SlidePod E in order to update the firmware, but you can do it manually. Let's take a look at the controls on the app. The first thing you will see or the simplest control is the remote control option right here. This one is for you to set the position and then set the motion and speed. If you want to, let's say, if you want the slider to start in the middle, you can just pull this and the slider will go super fast at max speed to get to that position. That's the ready position. And then what you can do is, let me move this dot away, is to set the speed. The speed is now at 100%. And if you want the slider to move backward or forward, you just need to tap onto this upwards and downwards button. I'm just going to pull the slider back at max speed by tapping on the downwards. As you can kind of hear, the noise of the motor is quite loud. I'm using a lav mic right now on my shirt, and I'm pretty sure you can hear that because this motor is quite loud, to be honest with you. Let me show you one more time. So 100% with a lav mic, and I'm about like, three feet away from the motor. So I wouldn't really recommend you to record any audio close to the motor, if you, especially if you set it to 100% speed. Let me show you if it's at, let's say, 50. So this is 50. It is a lot quieter than before, but it is still audible. If you want absolutely no sound almost, then you can try to set it at 10%, but it's going to be super slow and it should be quite quiet. And my laugh mic might not be able to pick it up at this distance. So the slider is actually moving right now, but it's just really hard for you to pick up the sound. Let me move the lav mic close to the motor right now. So you guys can hear actually how it sounds like when it's at 10%. So I feel like really, really quiet now. Let's change it to 50%, I'll put the laugh mic close to the motor. And 100%. So that's basically how loud the motor is. Again, try not to record any audio close to the motor, especially if you have to set the motor at 50% or above, you will pick up the noise for sure. And within the remote control section, you have different modes. You have gear shift mode, where you can change the speed during the, uh, the motion. And acceleration mode, of course, you can go from zero to 100%, set a distance, and then it will just accelerate. So it's gonna be slower at the beginning and then max speed at the end. After this, if you exit out of the remote control section, you have more choices in terms of uh, being creative with the app. You have creative video, which is what it's meant for. And here you can have different types of controls or you can set different types of patterns. And you have segment or segmentation, which you can set up different segment of motions um, at different stage. And you have step. The step feature is really good if you want to set up, let's say, a time-lapse video. And this is really good because you most likely are not going to record sound if you're doing time-lapse. So you don't have to worry about the motor noise. And they have gradient step, so you can be really creative with this 
feature within the app. And then we have silent mode. This one will make sure that the motor doesn't make too much noise, but it is also limiting the speed of the motor. So this is basically making the motor slower in order to avoid the noise. So if you're in silent mode, even if you set the speed to 100%, it's going to be super slow because of silent mode. So um, it's not the best solution, but they have it there. So if your motor is super slow, if your SlidePod E is moving super slow, you might need to check and see if your silent mode is on. And you have upgrade firmware option here and you have settings. Within settings, you can change the indicator light, which is the ring light underneath or at the bottom of the SlidePod E. You can change it to different colors. And I think this is just for you to make it look different. <laughs> so there's not much function in terms of changing the light or the color of the light. And you have device info and calibration. Calibration is really important because every time when you set up the SlidePod E on a tripod, I would recommend you to calibrate it in order for the SlidePod to know how much power or what it needs to do a smoother motion. So every time when you set it on a tripod, Tap on calibration, it'll take like a minute to calibrate the entire SlidePod E. That's uh, what I would recommend you guys to do. And we have the linkage control. This allows you to connect to other Moza devices while you're connecting to the SlidePod E. Let's say the Moza gimbals, and you can connect it to the head of the SlidePod E, and you can use the linkage control to control both devices at the same time to create more complicated shots within the same app which is really cool. And that's it. This is the Moza Master app for the SlidePod E and other Moza devices. As I said before, compared to other motorized sliders with apps, you're not being forced to update the firmware of the SlidePod E every time you connect to the slider. And thank you for doing that. Or thank you for not doing that, if you know what I mean. Trust me, it is very, very annoying when it happens on our other sliders. We just don't want to use them because of that. And I'm not kidding. Imagine you having to update the firmware when your client is standing right beside you on set. The payload of the Moza SlidePod E is the opposite of other traditional motorized sliders because of its vertical design. The horizontal payload is 4 kilograms and the vertical payload is actually 9 kilograms. From our test, it works very well and stable with our mirrorless camera setup. There's one very important thing to keep in mind when you are using a motorized slider. Since you will basically let go of your camera when the slider is moving, it will be much easier to use a camera with autofocus or you can pull focus wirelessly using a follow focus system. If not, Unless it is a completely horizontal panning motion, like going from left to right, your subject might get out of focus during the motion. Let's talk about what's included, because there is a lot. Besides the SlidePod E, Moza also included a mini tripod and an adapter to attach the tripod to the SlidePod, because for some reason, the bottom of the SlidePod is a quarter 20 screw instead of a quarter 20 mount. And I was right, you can actually use the SlidePod as a monopod with a mini tripod. It is very short to begin with, but remember, you can extend the SlidePod by battery power, which is actually pretty cool. The mini tripod is made of metal, so it's very sturdy and I'm very impressed. They have also included a flat head with both 3 8 and quarter 20 screw to attach a camera to the SlidePod. They have a very cool and convenient quick release mechanism to attach the head to. You simply slide the head into the slide pod, it clicks, then you can tighten the head with the big knob, which is great if you are wearing, let's say, gloves. Besides the flat head, there is also a video head that you can purchase separately. It uses the same locking mechanism for you to set the camera with different angle. I think it is a must-have accessory because you are pretty limited in terms of adjusting the angle without it. It also comes with a quick release plate for you to quickly attach and detach a camera. The last accessory is very simple, a USB to USB-C charging cable. Oh, I almost forgot to mention one of the best accessories Moza included, the carrying case. This thing is amazing. It is super high quality and it carries everything I mentioned very nicely. It is a hard shell case with paddings inside. I know it sounds weird, but I really like this case and I think it looks very cool. When it comes to build quality, it is very, very simple. 
almost everything except the rubber grip and buttons are made of metal and they seem very durable to me as a tool that you can definitely use outdoor. The only sort of downside is the weight. It is not super heavy, but you can definitely feel the heft. It is very similar to any metal monopod if you want to know how heavy it is. I think it is totally fine for me considering the cost and the build quality of the SlidePod E. If they made a carbon fiber version, yes, it will be lighter, but it will be much more expensive and will probably end up complaining about the price. So this version is completely fine. That's it. Those are my thoughts on the Goodson Moza SlidePod E motorized camera slider. To be honest with you, because of the easy setup process and controls, I like it a lot more than our other sliders. As I said in my other videos, if a tool is easy to use, you will be motivated to use it more. And this is the case with the SlidePod E. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.